Ed, welcome to the Cube. All right, Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Okay. Good to see you as well. John. Okay, Ed uh, runs biz dev for Cloudera, industry veteran, worked at VMware. Ed, uh, gotten to know you the past year. You guys have been doing great. Uh, what a difference one year makes, right? I mean, Absolutely. tell us, just let's start it off with, what's happened in a year? I mean, you know, here at Hadoop World, yep. Cloudera, the ecosystem, just give us your view of, your perspective of, what a difference one year makes. I think more than double is probably the fastest answer <laughs> I could give you, which is, I mean, even looking around at the conference, it's, it itself is literally double from what it was last year, but in terms of the number of partners that have entered the market and really decided to work with, with Cloudera, but also in general, just the, 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 the scope and size of the ecosystem uh, itself. Uh, investors from every angle. You've got companies, really well-branded marquee companies like Oracle coming into the mix and saying, hey, Hadoop is the, is the real deal and we need to invest here. Marquee companies like IBM and EMC also doing the same. And of course, you know, as a result, um, you know, lots and lots of customer interest in the technology and Cotter has been fortunate to have been in the market early and really made the right investments with the right team. And so we're able to serve a lot of those customer needs. So it's been really, it's been a fantastic year for the company. So we had a great day yesterday with Cloudera. We had Kirk on, we had Amr on twice, uh, who by <laughs> the way went viral with his uh, Modern Warfare review. But uh, we had uh, Jeff Hammerbacher on. So yep. we had, Pretty much the brain trust, and, uh, and Mike Olson, <laughs> yep, the brain trust of Cloudera. So we talked about the risk factors for Cloudera. Obviously you guys are number one. You've been kind of had untouchable lead, and then all of a sudden, boom, competition. So Mike talked about that. So the strategy and the product side they addressed, you're on the, the biz dev side. So you know when you were number one, everyone wants to stand next to you. I and mean, your phone rings off the hook from tier one partners all the way down to anyone who's just getting in the business who, mm -hmm. who wants a big data strategy. On the execution now, what are you guys doing right now to to continue your lead on the on the sales, marketing, biz dev? I mean, I know you get the partner program, but what's your strategy for yeah, going no, out I mean, and continuing that lead? The, the beautiful thing is, honestly, our strategy hasn't changed at all, and I know that might sound counterintuitive, but we started off with a, a really crisp vision, and we want what we want to do is create a very attractive platform for partners. And, and, you know, one of the core, uh, you know, sort of corporate strategy edicts for Quadera is a recognition that at the end of the day, the platform itself, Hadoop, is an input into a solution, and Cloudera is not likely to deliver the complete solution to market. Instead, it's going to be companies like Dell, for example, or it's going to be companies on the, uh, on the ISV side, like Informatica, which are going to deliver not only a base platform, but also the, 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 the BI or analytics or data integration technologies on top. And as a result, what we've done is we've really focused in on creating a very attractive platform to vendors to build on. And one of the, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that uh, I'm excited about that you know we're, we're now having an opportunity to correct, and that's a result, frankly, of the additional competitive dynamic. And I think yeah. the the Wikibon team pointed that out ra rather pointedly in uh, their most recent articles. <laughs> but is is the sort of the lack of understanding around what CDH is, and also the, some of the other um, investments that we're making to create a truly attractive platform for vendors to build on. And uh, you know, I mean, I think you got, you may have familiarity with exactly what CDH is, but for the sake of the audience here, what I'd like to do is say, say first off, you know, first and foremost, this is 100% uh, free and Apache licensed open source. But more importantly, it is everything that we build on the platform, meaning it's completely full featured. We put all of that out in the open. There's no turbo version of Hadoop that we've got hiding in the closet for our, our for pay customers. Yeah, yeah. We're absolutely making investment. Um, but I think, you know, when you think about it from the vendor perspective, and that's my bias, so I always think about, I treat all of the potential partners as really my customer. And when you think about it from that perspective, the things that matter most to vendors, number one, transparency. They need to understand exactly what our business model is, where we plan to make money, and where we plan to don't make money. They need to know what we're really good at developing and what we're not so good at developing. And sort of where we draw the, the, the boundaries around that investment. I think. You know, a testament to that, for example, is tomorrow we're hosting uh, a partner summit. So after this event, there are going to be uh, over 60 uh, individuals, but they max two per, per vendor. So we're going to have over 35 vendors mm -hmm. attending this event. And what they're going to hear from is our entire management team is as deeply as we can and as open as we can. And, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's funny, you know, I think uh, I saw this article in Forbes uh, the other day uh, about Cloudera. It was this... Um, the title of the article was something like Spies Like Us, and, it, it, and it, what it highlighted was that some, some competitor of Cloudera had actually hired a, a, a competitive intelligence agency to go on and 
and try to engage with, uh, you know, and, and try to learn more about Cloudera. And so they went on to Quora, which we have a lot of active engineers on Quora. And they, you know, they went out and they asked a bunch of product-related questions to our, um, to, a, to someone uh, on Quora, and our engineers immediately responded, and they started being very transparent, completely open to what, what they're building and why they're building it. And the article basically summarized to say, hey, um, you know what, uh, you know, clearly some people aren't all that sophisticated in figuring out you know, who they're talking to and it's really important to do that. And they got the absolute wrong conclusion. Our engineers are actually encouraged and in fact rewarded for being extremely transparent in the market because we believe that it's transparency that will ultimately allow us to be that platform vendor. And that's what attracts me, Jeff Hammerbacher, who's active on Core as well. He's recruiting there too, so you guys yeah. are out engaging the community. Yeah. So just to, let me just review, because this is cool that you're addressing this, because Hortonworks and others, and I'll say the name Hortonworks, has been pumping up the PR and creating a lot of noise around open and kind of depositioning Cloudera. Um, so you guys are completely open, 100% Hadoop open source. Everything in, you build. In, in every way. In every way. You have engineers building core, you've got tools and all the other stuff is being built in Cloudera and contributing into the community. Actually, it's the other way around. We build it in the community at Apache.org. So all of our technology is built at Apache.org. It's, it's developed there. Um, it's, it's, it's initially shared there. And then we have another team inside our company that pulls down bits from Apache.org and then assembles them and integrates them. So it's, real, it's a really key thing. And there's no, we, do, we have no bits that we don't develop at Apache.org that are part of CDH. So there, I mean, there can be no mistake that everything that, uh, that is in CDH is everything we got. So CDH is free. It is free. In and every it's way. open source. It's open. Uh, you it's charge open Enterprise Edition. That's the only thing that's different. You yeah. guys charge. Which is your management console. Right. Management right. suite and all kinds of the tools. And that's not free and that's not open source. That's just correct. To be clear. Yep. Right? But so, so Amr took us yesterday through, I don't know, half a dozen probably mm -hmm. open source projects. Mm -hmm. And then the one is the, the management console and that's what you charge for. That's where you're going to make yeah, money. Yeah. We, we manufacture, essentially we manufacture two products, but we sell one. So we manufacture the Quadera distribution, including Apache yeah, Hadoop. That's free. We, it's free. <laughs> And then we all in open source and built at Apache and, and really heavily tested and well documented and, and, and well integrated. And then we also uh, uh, manufacture Quadera Enterprise, which includes support and indemnities and warranties for that full featured CDH product and also includes the Quadera Management Suite. And that's a subscription. And that's a subscription. And um, so customers can, can run CDH, they can then buy and license Cloudera Enterprise, and then someday if they decide they don't need Cloudera Enterprise for whatever reason, if, they're, if their team are scripting wizards and they've decided that they, you know, they don't need the extra um, opportunity for being able to track all of the things that uh, Cloudera Enterprise allows them to, they can step off of Cloudera Enterprise and continue to use full featured Hadoop so as they see fit. So take an example of one of your partners that you announced this week, NetApp. Mm -hmm. NetApp's going to package uh, uh, your CDH. CDH and the subscription. Correct. Uh, to yeah. their their customers, mm -hmm. and then they're going to let their channel either you know they'll pre bundle it or do a reference architecture. You'll get paid for that subscription that's bundled. That's NetApp correct. will make money off of its filers. Yes. Um, and the customer gets a package solution. Exactly right. And in fact, that's another important thing that uh, you know is probably worth discussing, which is our go to market model. I don't know if uh, you guys had a chance to talk with anyone yesterday on that, but I'm responsible for our channel strategy. And one of the key things that we've agreed to as a, as a company is that we really are going to go to market through channel partners. Yeah. So we covered SGI. That was a great announcement. Yep. And 100%. So uh, as, as close as we can get. Okay. I mean, that well, you're is still our doing the direct deals. You still have that belly to belly sales force because it's still early, right? So there's a mix of direct and indirect, not a pure indirect. But as, and that's only, that's only as we're able to, until yeah, we're yeah, able yeah. to ramp up yeah. our partners fully, in which case we really want our, the, the current team that is working belly to belly to really support our partners. So, uh, so VMware like, but I, I wanted to VMware ask you. VMware like, NetApp like, very yeah. similar. Very, yes. very NetApp like, NetApp probably 75% yep. you know, mm -hmm. indirect. Exactly. What are the similarities and differences with VMware in the, in the ecosystem? You know it well. I do know it well, yeah. I spent several years working at VMware. And, uh, you know, I think, I mean, the first and most obvious uh, difference is that when you think, when I think about platform software in general, you know, there are a few different flavors of platform. Um, one of the things that makes Hadoop very unique, very unique relative to other platforms, is that it not only is it Apache licensed, but it really is, it's dependent upon other external innovators to, to create the entire full uh, value of the ecosystem. So, or, or you know, the, or, yeah. of the solution. Right. So unlike, for example, so like, let's take a platform like everyone's familiar with, like Apple iTunes, right? What happens is Apple um, creates uh, the platform and they put it kind of in the middle. On top of uh, and behind the scenes is the, is the innovator, the app builder. He builds it, he publishes it on Apple, and then Apple controls all access to the customer. Yeah. That's not Hadoop, right? Right. <laughs> Let's take VMware. 
for uh, Red Hat, for example. So in that case, they publish a platform. They own and control the, the absolute uh, structure and boundaries of what that platform is. And then on top of that, application vendors build, and then they deliver it to the, the customer. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, the, you know, the relationship really is um, you know, from that external innovator straight down, and there's no, there's, you know, there's no way for them to really modify the platform. Then you take Hadoop, which is 100% Apache licensed open source, and you really, you really open up uh, the opportunity for vendors to take Hadoop as an input into their system and then deliver it straight to their customers, or for customers themselves to just say, I want straight up vanilla Hadoop, I'm gonna go this way, and I'm gonna add on my own uh, bevy app of applications. So you're, we're seeing all sorts of variants right now in the market. We're seeing uh, software as a service being delivered that's based on Hadoop. There was a great announcement a few weeks ago from a company named uh, uh, Tidemark, uh, previously yeah. known as Perferian, they're taking all of CDH, they're, but they're the customer doesn't know that. They're, yeah. And they're, what they're doing is they're delivering software as a, as a service based it. on Hadoop. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we're psyched that you're clearing this up because obviously we're seeing, we saw all that stuff, but I really think the indirect strategy is a home run. I said it when we talked about mm -hmm. the SGI thing and it's accelerates you guys, you enable, but you know, channels uh, is an interesting business. I mean, the, you have to have pure transparency, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. but they need conf people need confidence, and, and they don't they worry about competition. So channel conflict is always the big issue, right? Right. She is Cloudera going to compete with us? So talk that talk us through that that strategy. So obviously the market's growing, new solutions are coming around the corner. These guys want to make money. I mean, channel it's all about you know what have you done for me today, right? That you know, that is you know. exactly right. And you know what? That's that's why we decided on the channel strategy uh, specifically around our product is because we recognize that each and every single uh, potential channel partner of ours can actually innovate themselves on top of and create differentiation, and we're not an obstacle to that process. So we provide our platform as an input, and we're capable of managing that platform, but ultimately creating differentiation is all in the hands of our partners, um, and we're there to help, but it gives them wide latitude. So take, for example, the differences between Dell and NetApp Solution. They are very different reference architectures, leveraging the exact same platform. And they have right. to make money. I mean, the money-making side of it is, you know, people kind of don't really talk about that, but, you know, channel partners, loyalty is all about <laughs> you know, who can help them make cash, right? Right, I mean, exactly. So what are you hearing there in terms of the ecosystem as the channel develops and the partnerships are there? More SIs, what's the profile of your of your partners? I mean, can you can give us the breakdown of sure, what we they have look like from Dell? We know Dell and NetApp, but they're yeah. your guys. But So uh, a big part of our strategy is to work with IHVs and then IHV resellers. So you're talking about companies like Dell, like SGI, like NetApp, for example, independent hardware manufacturers. Um, another part of our strategy, though, and a key, a key requirement from our customers uh, is to work with a whole variety of ISVs, particularly in the data management space. So you've got really marquee companies in the database space like IBM's Natiza or Teradata. Um, you've got in companies like Informatica and Talend. You've got companies on the BI side like MicroStrategy and Tableau. Mm -hmm. These kinds of technologies are currently in play at our customers have made substantial investments and ultimately they want to be able to continue to leverage them with the data platform, whichever data platform that they end up choosing. So we invest considerably there. A big part of that has been our Cloudera Connect uh, partner program. It's an opportunity for us to help the customer to understand which technologies work and work well with, with our platform. It's also an opportunity for us to engage directly and assist the vendor. So one of the things that we created um, as part of that program is, first off, immediate and, and absolute discounted access to any part of our training. Second, lots of free information, access to our world-class knowledge base, access to our support team, direct access to our support team. Um, the, the vendors also get access to a developer portal that we've created specifically for them. So if, if you think about it this way, Hadoop gets built at apache.org, but solutions don't get built at apache.org, right? So what we're really trying to help our vendors do is be able to develop their solutions by having real clear visibility to the API level points of Hadoop. They're not necessarily interested in, in trying to figure out how, how MR2 works or, or contributing code to that, but they absolutely are interested in figuring out how to run and execute their software on top of Hadoop. So when I think about the things that matter to create an attractive platform, and at the end of the day, that's what we're really trying to do, first and foremost is transparency, mm -hmm. right? Second, really ultimately is really clear visibility to the APIs and the documentation of that platform so that there's no ambiguity. The, the, the vendor, this is the user in this case, that's building a solution, can absolutely absorb all of that content really cleanly. And then ultimately, you know, I think it, it's customers, right? Users of the technology, and I think our download numbers are they're, yeah. they're, they're something we're proud of. We're, we're hearing good feedback. I mean, the feedback we hear from folks is, yeah, I love how they take away the complexity of handling versions and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. So, you know, I think totally is a great way. The CDH is a great bundle. Um, you know, the questions that we have for you is, what are you hearing about 
the other products, the ones you're actually selling, does that create the lock-in? So that's something that we ask Armour directly. You know, is that the is that the lock-in? And what happens when the deployments get so big? <laughs> um, I mean, the I way I really see an issue there, but that's what people are afraid of. I mean, that's kind of the it's more of fear. I mean, so people can use that fear and. I think, I think what we've seen in other markets is that management tools are ultimately interchangeable, and the only way that we're going to retain a customer is by out-innovating the competition on the management side. The lock-in the lock -in, uh, component, as you will, is not really part of our business model. It's very difficult to achieve with an Apache licensed uh, yeah. platform and a management suite that sits on s outside of that, uh, that licensed artifact. So ultimately, if we don't out-innovate, we're going to lose. So we're working on the innovation. And How's that's... How's yeah. the hiring going? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I, I had a, I wanted to come back to that. You mentioned download yeah. numbers. Can you share the numbers with the audience? I can't. I can't okay. share them publicly. But what I can say is that they've been uh, on an incredible uh, trajectory. Okay. Um, that uh, and what we've seen is month to month growth rates. Uh, every single month, we continue to see really significant growth rates. And then I, I had a follow up question on you talked about the the partner program. How do you manage all those partners? How do you prioritize them? I mean, the the hardware vendors, it's pretty easy because there's a few big whales, but the the ISVs, mm -hmm. they're, I mean, your phone, like John said, must be ringing off the hook. How do you juggle that? Um, and, and can you do it better than VMware, for example? <laughs> well, we do, we handle the, the influx of partner interest in two ways. One, we've been relatively structured with the Cloudera Connect uh, partner program, and we make real investments there. So we have dedicated folks that are there to help. We have our engineering team that is actually feeding inputs, and we're, we're leveraging some of the same resources that we provide to our customers and feeding those directly to our partners as well. So that's one way that we handle it. But the other way, frankly, is, I mean, customers help here. Having access to and, and a real customer population, they help you set priorities pretty quickly. And so we're able to understand what we track in, inside of our systems, which, uh, which technologies our customers use. So we know, for example, what percentage of our customer base has, has SaaS installed, and we'd like to use that with Hadoop. We know which percentage of our customer base is currently running on Red Hat, and which is not. So having clear visibility to that helps so us to prioritize. Drives. How about incentives? I mean, as the channel business is, is like I said, very fickle people, you know, you know the channel business. Uh, mm -hmm. I spent you know, almost a decade in, in uh, HP's channel organization, and you, know, you have to provide soft dollars. There's a lot of kind of blocking and tackling. You guys are clearly building out that tier one with the SGIs of the world and other vendors, and then get the, con the Partner Connect program for kind of everyone else who's going to grow up into a tier one. Yeah. Um, Training, soft dollars, incentives. You guys have that going yet, or is that we do? The roadmap? We do, and in fact, you know, in addition to the sort of more widely publicized relationships you see with companies like Dell yeah. and Cloudera, um, we're actually building a very successful network of um, independent uh, VARs. And the VARs, in general, what, what we do is we prioritize and select VARs based on the top level relationships that we have, because th th that really helps them to hone in. They've got validation from, for, for example, um, someone that sells resells SGI is an organization that now has heard really loud and clear from SGI the, the specific platform configurations that they're going to represent to their customers, and they ultimately want to represent them directly. And how we make investments is we're, I mean, the investments we're making ultimately in our sales org, I'm going to lose the word direct from that conversation because our sales org is being built to help our partners yeah. succeed, and I think that's where your... The end game is to go completely indirect and have all your support go into some managing that channel. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the mix of uh, revenue generation from your partners? Obviously, a, you know, with SGI, they have pre-built channels that you're funneling in. you got NetApp, and they're wrapping their products and services around it. How much is services, and how much is a solution specifically Can, do you have any visibility or yeah. a feel for that at this point i mean services uh relative to you mean for quad era particularly or for our no, partners for the, for the partner i mean if i'm a partner I'm like hey okay i'm going to use cdh i'm going to bundle this i don't mind paying you a wholesale mm -hmm. if i'm going to be able to throw off more cash on you know deployment of cloud and services etc and or if i'm a product manufacturer i have a product a solution I bundle a you in, I need to have that step up. A absolutely, uh, great question. So depending upon the partner we're dealing with, they like to either monetize or generate their revenue in different ways. So for example, NetApp. NetApp is a company that has very limited services, and their, their focus as a business is really on delivering hardware and software configured together, and they, they rely heavily on a, a, a services channel to fulfill. Um, you take, in, in contrast to a company like, for example, Dell, which has a very successful services business and really is excited about having service offerings around Hadoop. So it depends upon the company, but when we talk about our VAR channel in particular, one of the things, it's a, in, an internal acronym, but uh, I'll share it publicly here, um, we, we call our VARs super VARs, and what makes them super and why, why we've selected the, the, the organizations that we are selecting right now to be our VAR is that they not only can fulfill orders for uh, hardware and software, 
particularly data management or infrastructure software, but they also have a services team on hand because we recognize that there is a services opportunity with every Hadoop deployment, and we want our partners to have that. So as an organization, we're structuring our, uh, our services staff to facilitate and enable our partners not to be sold directly. Okay, so that's the follow-up that I had. The, tomorrow when the partners ask, okay, what do you want to be when mm -hmm. you're really growing up? Is it services, is it software? Cloudera is, is a software company okay, through so and through. Yeah. At, and at Mike its core. Well, Amer, yeah, so, um, we kind yeah. of got Amr, well he didn't say it, but we said it's an operating system. You know. So it's given <laughs> that, so given <laughs> that, I mean, you, you yeah. can make money on services, yeah. right? People need services, so Absolutely. okay, great. And, and partners and you, will make that money and, for and, us. And you know, early on, you had to do some of that, and you're you've been very clear about where it's going. It's hard to make money in software when you're giving all the software away for free. Well, we're not <laughs> giving all the software away I know, for but free, so yeah. you've got that piece mm -hmm. now. But here's my question. As Hadoop goes into the enterprise, which it's clearly doing, mm -hmm. um, is that, that whole bundling, like what you're doing with NetApp, is that really ultimately how you're going to start to, to monetize and, and successfully monetize your software? Is um, by pushing it through. Yeah, uh, packaging and that bundling, that solution. In other words, our enterprise customer is going to be more receptive to that solution package than, say, the, the fringe that has been using Hadoop for the last two or three I think years. there's no question about it. If you if you look at what Cloudera Enterprise does, if, I don't know if um, if you've had a chance to attend any of the sessions maybe where Cloudera Enterprise is, is currently being demonstrated. We just had Alex Williams yes. just on the air, did a review. Okay, yeah, that's he's great. Been going. Good and impressed with it. Yeah, you, there's no question about it, and I, I don't. And Alex probably hasn't seen the new version um, that you know our team is working on. And it's you know quietly working on in the background. Incredible, um, incredible developments, in, and that's really a function of when you have direct access to so many customers and you're getting so much input and feedback, and they're the kinds of access to the kinds of customers we ultimately want to serve, so real enterprises. What you get is really fast innovation from a really talented team that knows to do well. I mean, we are years ahead on yeah. the management side, it's absolutely clear. years ahead. Yeah. And you know, I, so I was a guy who worked at VMware for several years, and I can tell you that while the hypervisor itself was, was a, a core component to VMware's success, the monetization strategy was very squirrely around vCenter. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. and yeah. we're not ignorant to that. Uh, yeah, you can learn history. a lot from your VMware experience because absolutely you know, the the market changed significantly, and you know there you were free hypervisors available all of a sudden. VMware itself had a free hypervisor. We had yeah. we had uh, VMware Server, and we had also our VMware Player uh, products, right. and those were all free, and they were very good technology. They were the best available on the market for free, and they were better, in my opinion, they were better than anything else, open or not, well, our at the time. Our opinion, too, I mean, yeah. and, and they still were, are. They, they, were, they were superior products in every way, but yet how VMware was successful was recognizing that in the interest of running a production environment with an SOA, you need management software, and they've also built the best management software. And there's no question that we understand that strategy. They had a and phenomenal ecosystem. I mean, there's the similarities, right? They did, and, you, and, the, and the ecosystem was in, in large part predicated on transparency, Ac very clear access to the APIs and a willingness to help partners be successful with those APIs, and ultimately drawing a very tight box about what the company wanted to do and didn't want to do. I mean, look, and you're not gonna, you're not going to lose friends when you make people money. That's my philosophy. I agree. Right? So when you're in that business where you can come in and enable a channel mm -hmm. and have options on your growth strategy, which you do. I mean, you can say, okay, bundling. I can go. You know, I can have this sold direct, or at least as long as you got the options, yep. you can grow with that market. So you know. Again, the, the, it's a money-making opportunity for the but partnerships. But there's more than that, right? Because you mentioned Apple, mm -hmm. iTunes, Oracle's another example, and the way you make money with Apple and the way you make money with Oracle is different than the way you make money with VMware and presumably Cloudera. Yeah, I mean, our strategy is, if you make this base platform easier to install, more reliable, and you make it ultimately you know, uh, really rock solid from an integration standpoint, more people are going to use it. So what happens when more people use it? Uh, first thing that happens is more solution. It, it's out there, so it's more solutions get built. When more solutions get built, then you see more clusters get developed. When more clusters are out there, they start to move into production, and then they, they need an SLA. And when they need an SLA, Cloudera and Enterprise gets purchased. But along that path, when those solutions got built, guess what else happened? More cloud units got sold, more servers got sold, more networking gear got sold, more services got created. You get, um, you get uh, ultimately uh, more operating systems got sold, more databases got data into them, more BI clients got created. The ecosystem is deep and rich, and a lot of people stand to make money. Hop in, it. people. What the about, water's great. What about, what about support? Okay, so you know the other guys are saying we're just going to make money on support. I mean, support. You guys still are doing support, right? I mean, you're selling support. There's no right, question. So the Cloudera Enterprise contains two things, right? The management suite and support. Th this is this is not uh, uncomplicated technology, and having a world-class support team is a value, and customers do want to pay for that value. But we we believe that support in and of itself is not enough. 
and then ultimately when you want to deliver an SLA, being able to call when you have a problem is the wrong approach. You want to be proactive and understand the problem well in advance of it actually occurring. That's really important when, for example, if you're a customer, a lot of our customers have a data pipeline. That they they're building out, basically. I mean, they're, it's, it's new and emerging, so they're building out. It's I mean, not just support, they need other tools. Yeah, and it, building out, I think, is an understatement for some, yeah, where I mean, some of our customers <laughs> are. I mean, when you have a thousand node cluster that you're operating, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, that is mission critical to your business, I don't think that's building out anymore. I think that's an investment in a yeah, technology yeah. that's mission critical. And what you want to see when you have a mission critical technology is you want to know early and often when a problem may emerge. Not, yeah. oh, oh my gosh, we have a problem, now I need to go you know, phone a friend. Phone a friend is, is kind of a last resort. We offer that, but what we really do is, and that's the that's the beauty. That's why we don't yeah. decouple our support from our management suite. It's not about phone a friend. It's about understanding the operation of your cluster the entire way through twenty four. And the other, the other thing that people don't talk about in the support is that with open source, a lot of support gets handled in the community as well. So like. That's right. So in a way, you're by already pre-cannibalized with the community. By us and by <laughs> others, absolutely. But you, you, know. you will never see, to that Forbes article I referenced earlier, you will, you will not see, our, our engineers are not trained to withhold information under any circumstances yeah, yeah. to anyone, free or paying. Yeah. This is about getting- You don't want to hold back yeah. your business. I mean, you have nothing to yeah. hide. It's open, right? It's, it's open, open and we're here to help. Yeah. We're here to help yeah. whether you're paying us or yeah. not. Saying there's really value are. to that anticipatory remediation. Okay. Yeah. And that's what you're packaging. Ed, yeah. clearing up the air, yeah, great. Uh, Great CUBE guest, you're awesome on the CUBE. We're going to have you more on because uh, great to get the info out there. Really impressed with the channel strategy. Love the love the growth strategy with Cloudera. You guys are really impressive. Thanks. I'm really, really impressed to see that you guys got everything pumping on all cylinders. Kirk and you are cranking out on the business execution. Um, we're in the team playing this chess match with Open. Perfect, so great, congratulations. Great. Thanks. Congratulations on the financing. Oh, thank you okay, as well. Ed yeah. from Cloudera clearing it up here inside the CUBE. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with more video. Thanks guys. All right, thanks, Ed.